Hi, welcome to Tea Stains. Hi. Today, this is our second episode of Hexet. And it's nighttime. Lovely. Oh, perfect. We've wasted enough time. Oh, I don't have any food. Oh, oh I do. Come on. I'm sorry. Dick. I'm rambling already. Oh, uh, that's spider. Holy shit. Fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah. How oh, did I god. get. Hi, oh my god. I'm like, how am I getting hurt? I'm sitting in a hole. Everything drops emerald shards on this now. Yeah. Like when you kill monsters. I'm okay with that. That's weird. We trade with some oh my god, we're old. It's been so long since we friggin' played this last. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely been a while. Can't tell if daylight's coming or going. Uh. So, since Game Grumps is an established channel, I feel like it's okay to just mention them here. Like, as a thing. I'm not going to copy their nonsense, but just to mention, Dan always tells really interesting stories, he and does. I want to tell stories, but I don't have any friggin' life experience <laughs> like he has, because he's a traveling stoner Jew who has perfect pitch and sings in a band. Yeah, uh, yeah. I... Yeah, no, I... Fucking just, I got nothing. I literally got nothing. You got more than me, which is, yeah. And I got nothing though. It's like, oh, should I tell the hurricane story? You have a hurricane story? Um, I was fire. trapped in a hurricane in September. Really? Oh yeah, that's right. I remember you telling me about that. Jackass. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't tell me a bunch though. Go on about it. Okay. So, I am obligatory plug to a certain student painting company whose name I will not mention here for liability issues. Probably a good idea. But, um, basically what happened is we went on a trip. Hang on, I'm going to turn down my in-game audio because the music is loud as all hell. I got talking and then all of a sudden the Minecraft piano music came on and I was like, yeah, I can't do two <laughs> things at once. I'm not that skilled. Um, oh god, what is happening? My dad is calling me. Oh god. Um, pause here, Alex. Okay. okay, so speaking of painting companies, that was regarding my painting company. <laughs> oh good. Because people want estimates done. So apparently there are a couple people out in town that want them done. So yeah, I guess I'll some point. Oh, yeah. But back on topic, hurricanes. Oh my god, I totally forgot. Um, yeah, no, I was... Oh, hey, that's a skeleton. Jesus, fuck, die. So, I ran a painting company last summer, and I'm doing it again this year, and basically what happened is the painting company who shall not be named runs basically a franchise system. So I own a franchise mm -hmm. and it's owning a, it's owning your own business and it's operating it. There's nothing different than being a business owner in any other business. Mm -hmm. But um, they provide you with support and whatnot. And part of the things that they provide you with is an incentive trip. So if you produce a certain dollar value of work, you get to go on an incentive trip to Mexico, which was in September this year. <laughs> That's a pretty and damn good incentive. <laughs> I know, it was pretty nice. It was a week. And Jeez. so the trip was early September. I would have I had to miss a week of school, but uh. you know, that would have been fine because we were supposed to have internet. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> Just nothing. So, well we'll just I'll I'll continue with the story. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> When we were supposed to go, they told us that there was going to be a hurricane, because it's hurricane season in Mexico, but they told us it was going to be basically a glancing blow yeah. where we were. So, it wasn't supposed to hit the area we were in hard, and we were supposed to be just fine, we'd have power, we'd have internet, like it would knock anything out. Yeah. So, I had math assignments and stuff that I had to do, because I'm a nerd and I do that sort of shit for fun. <laughs> I'm also apparently a masochist, but that's beside the point. Um, so, we went, and when we got on the plane, they told us it was supposed to be a bit more of a, more than a glancing blow. It wasn't supposed to affect too much, but it was going to hit the area we were in. Oh, good. And then we landed in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And then they told us that we couldn't get back to Canada because the plane was leaving right then because the hurricane was inbound and it was going to fuck shit up. Oh, no. <laughs> 
Yep. So. Just fucked you guys straight over. Yep. So here we are, our <laughs> Canadian selves, having never experienced a hurricane before. Yeah. And we were like, oh, it's going to be fine. It's no big deal. We deal with extreme weather in Canada all the time. This is nothing. It, this is pussy shit. It goes from raining to, oh my god, I'm going to die of uh, like <laughs> hypothermia in zero seconds. The next time we meet up, because we're not actually in the same spatial location as oh god. the viewer at home may have gathered. Oh, exposing the movie magic! But, um... Jesus, what the hell was that? What was what? <laughs> you just shit yourself. <laughs> Exposing the movie magic! <laughs> oh my god, I'm but, poisoned. Um, yeah, I'm just hopping around like a lagger. Um, yeah, so... Where was I? Oh yeah, remind me to show you the videos of the hurricane the next time okay. that we get together. But, um... Basically, what the deal was... Is... We were like, oh yeah, no, we have extreme weather in Canada all the time. A hurricane is going to be pussy shit compared to the storms we get. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was a category three or four, maybe, at most. Mm -hmm. Like, it was about mid-grade hurricane. It fucked shit up. Really? It's... Okay, so here's the breakdown. Okay. The hotel had brick domes. Sure. It blew all of the brick off of the domes. <laughs> it wow. took all of the lawn chairs and they were just gone. Jesus. Don't know where they went. I doubt we'll ever see them again. <laughs> just took a trip. Oh, yep. Um, it sandblasted all the paint off of everything seaside. Oh my god. It tore windows out of the hotel. The hotel next door to us was three feet underwater. <laughs> Luckily, we were Jesus. on slightly higher ground, so we only had an inch or two in our rooms. That's nuts! And it knocked out power, running water, absolutely everything. We had nothing. And all the locks on the rooms were electronic. Yeah. So, of course, nothing worked. Oh, no. Which turned out to be kind of cool in our favor because we spent a night sleeping out under the stars by the side of the lovely mud-filled ruined pool. <laughs> but um, oh, buddy. it was actually it was really interesting aside from the fact that we almost ran out of food at one point. Jesus. But then I think the Mexican military or someone gave us more, so we were fine. Um, I was a little bit pissed that they weren't doing more to help the locals, but wow, yeah, That's... whatever. That's more insane. on that later, <laughs> but, um, oh, there's more to that story. But anyway, so the first night that we were there, the, it was before the hurricane happened. Yeah. So basically what the deal was, was um, we were all drinking as university students do. <laughs> uh, quite heavily because it was an all-inclusive. Oh, yeah. And everyone was pretty wasted for hurricane night, as we came to call it. Yeah. And everyone was having a good time. The storm started to pick up. It wasn't really a big deal. We managed to find our way uh, onto the roof of the five-story hotel. Sorry, I just found a dimensional we... door. Ooh, don't go in. No. <laughs> I'm looking at the prettiness of it, though. Looks like it lures you in. But I'm, nope, not going in there. Okay, back to my story. Sorry. Yours isn't important. Fuck you. Wow. <laughs> um, so basically, Dang. we got up onto the roof of our five-story hotel building, which I'm sure we probably shouldn't have, because when you got up there, you could get into people's rooms from there. <laughs> because, like, it was an upper balcony that you shouldn't really have been supposed to... You shouldn't have been able to get into there, yeah, yeah. but you could. So, but basically the deal was, was we got up there, and we filmed the sunset and everything, and we filmed the waves starting to come in, and they were like 15 feet high at that point, the storm hadn't started yet. Yeah. And, um, we went out in the waves for a little while, until the lifeguards told us that we had to leave. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> that was fun. And some Mexican dude asked me if I wanted to buy weed and cigars. <laughs> 
and he was legit selling pot and cigars on the beach. <laughs> it's like trying to get one last one in before my family is killed by a hurricane. Ugh, pretty much. I chose not to because I didn't really want to get raped by the police, but <laughs> wow. that's beside the point. Oh, hi, Leg. His chest is just like standing open. Well, there we no, go. I'm inside of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anywho. But, um, so, fast forward to that night, everybody's at least lightly sloshed, yeah. and the hurricane is now in full force. We're playing cards against humanity on the fifth floor. All the windows and glass doors above the second floor, they had taped off with masking tape, so if they shattered, glass wouldn't blow everywhere. Oh my god. Do you, yep. Do you have any wood? So, Sorry. Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, so they had them taped off with masking tape. We were up there playing cards against humanity. And the wind, while we could still see, because it got dark, yeah. um, it was blowing hard enough to literally... You know how palm trees look? Yeah. Yeah, they were blowing sideways. <laughs> like, y y you know all the fronds? They were pointing straight out horizontal in one direction. <laughs> wow, that's nuts. Yeah, so basically that night, the hallways started to flood. Oh, because good. everything in Mexico is, all the floors are made of tile, yeah, yeah. understandably. You don't want carpet in somewhere that's that humid and that you get that much water on. Yeah, yeah. So, basically, how it went down is the floors started to get slippery. Yeah. This registered in our incredibly brilliant young minds, and we figured they'd probably get slipperier if we put shampoo on them. <laughs> <laughs> so we took bottles of hotel shampoo and shower gel, emptied them onto the hallway floor, and turned it into a slip and slide. Oh my god! <laughs> yep, and we had a line of people going down. See, this is a tiny bunny. That is a tiny bunny. He is adorable. Don't kill the bunny. Oh, of... oh my god! That was horrifying. I'm never gonna. He kill deserved him. to die. <laughs> no. Jesus, that was a terrifying sound. Anyway, so we had a line of guys going all the way down the hallway and out into the hurricane, and you'd run and you'd slide, and you'd, you could almost get to the end of the hallway under your own power. But um, what they'd do is they'd push you along, and they'd push you. We'd, we formed a line, so as soon as you got to the end of the line, you became the next part of the line. Yeah. And we went out as far out into the hurricane as we could, pushing people like that until security finally came and told us we had to go back to our rooms. <laughs> Oh my because God. you know us, our little you're poisoned again. I know our I know. little lovely Canadian selves. We weren't thinking anything of it. We were like, oh, it's just some strong wind and stuff. There's nothing that's going to happen. Yeah. We're fine. So the next day, we went outside to help clean up the hotel grounds because we just wanted the poor Mexicans to be able to go back to their own families and deal with their own shit. Yeah. That's a penguin. So we helped them clean up. And there was a pane of glass that stuck itself in the ground yeah. and folded over itself. And it cut probably a solid foot into packed dirt. Jesus. That's nuts. Like, that would have sliced someone in half if, a, if it had been against anyone. It was right yeah. outside of our room, too. Jesus. That's fucking yeah. nuts. And then there was another pane of glass that got blown out of a window, and it was perfectly intact. <laughs> not a scratch on it, not cracked at all, nothing. Wow. And it had, like, you know how you described, like, the sawmills that your, or the saws that your dad works on? Yeah, yeah. That they become so perfectly flat that you can drop them on a table and they'll flutter down like a piece of paper because of the air resistance? Yeah, yeah. I think that's basically what this did. But it was perfectly intact. Jesus. That's... But yeah, it blew all the bricks off the domes on the hotel at San Blas, and all the seaside paint off. It fucked shit up no, pretty good. No. God damn. So, that was day one. Oh, we were no. there for a week. Oh no. And so we had no running water, and no safe water. So we couldn't shower, we had no power, we couldn't flush our toilets, you had to go out with your garbage can, get a garbage can full of pool water, and fill your toilet tank if you wanted to flush it. <laughs> Jesus. Um, we had no power or anything to charge our phones. No one had thought to bring candles or anything, because we didn't think this kind of shit was going to happen. Yeah. 
So we're basically just there. Mm -hmm. No power, no water, no nothing. Mm -hmm. For probably five days we stayed in that hotel. And insert name of airline commonly flown in Canada here forgot to evacuate us with the rest of the Canadians. What? Like, like I'll give you a hint. It starts with West, and the rest of you can put the pieces together. Like, how did they forget? Like, what? Uh, when you're dealing with something like that, I guess people can slip through the cracks? I, like, uh, uh, forgetting a passenger from an airplane is just like, that to me seems kind of essential. Well, I don't blame them, because they got thousands of Canadians out. I suppose, but still. Oh, my bed's just awkwardly sitting there. Yeah. Well, you no, give my but bed back. Um, we all had a good time. So, after the hurricane hey, night, give, the next day... Give me my bed back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, did I take it? <laughs> I did. Thank you. Did I do that? Oh, God, no. Uh, but anyway, so... They weren't serving alcohol, and it was an all-inclusive. Yeah. So we thought this was an injustice. <laughs> so, the hotel had swim-up bars yeah. that were unmanned and unguarded. Oh, no. So, we went to them to see if they had left any liquor there. Yeah. They left all the liquor there. Oh, my God. Jesus. Oh. Um, hi, terrifying pink zombie of... Rare quick-figured zombie of the Defender. Yeah, I went to go hit him, and my sword flew out. And now my sword is gone. Oh shit, there's another zombie, watch oh, out. Hi. Anywho. So they left there's all the liquor? Yeah, they left all the liquor in the bars, because it was supposed to be in locked cabinets, but of course the hurricane kind of blew shit open a little bit. Yeah. So, we went, and we started running the bar, <laughs> and we called it, insert name of painting company, here's bar. <laughs> and so, people were kind of just milling around, sort of depressed, so we started a social event, and we managed to tap a keg, Yeah. and we were pouring the beer into buckets, and we were foaming it down, so you could just dip your cup in and grab a cup of beer. Oh my god. And we were mixing drinks. I did shots out of a coconut. <laughs> um, it was wonderful. That's awesome. The drinking age in Canada, if you're in the U.S., is 18. So we were all fine. Thank you for asking. <laughs> wow. That's... And, yeah, so that was fun. And then the Mexicans came down probably eight hours later once they finally realized what we were doing. Yeah. And they shut down our bar. <laughs> Damn it. Yep. Can't, can't so they, blame they, them, but... they they didn't really speak any English, so they literally just shoved us out of the bar <laughs> and started throwing all the liquor in carts to go lock up. <laughs> that would teach you for next time. Yeah, I don't blame them because they weren't making any money on it anymore anyway. But it was a fucking all inclusive. Yeah. So. No. God damn. And but that didn't stop anyone because we still had a solid. Four bottles of liquor a peach a piece in each of our rooms. <laughs> God damn, that's funny. Yeah, so everybody was pretty sloshed the entire time. I decided to keep a level head after that because hangovers when you don't have any running water aren't fun. No doubt. God damn. But uh, yeah, so after that we basically just hung out, played games, um, waited for an evac, didn't get evac'd. And then we smelled really bad after several days of just not showering. Some people went to wash off in the ocean. Yeah. It didn't really help because then they were salty as well as being uncomfortable. That is true. So, yeah, it was hot. There was no air conditioning. We started out at three meals a day, and then they started rationing us down to basically two plates of rice a piece, <laughs> or two, like, portions of rice. Wow. And they were doing a good job of making the food last. Like, they did an awesome job for what they had. Yeah. But, um, I think the military must have dropped food off at some point because, you know, they managed to make it last. Yeah. 
but uh, we were all a little hungry, and we ran out of bottled water and drinks in our mini fridges and whatnot after, I think, the second or third day. So we were being rationed, like, a bottle of water it was two apiece a day, and for Canadians who are used to a, you know, a cold, dryish climate, we weren't used to losing a lot of water just during the course of the day. Yeah. So I don't think our bodies were particularly well adapted to it, because I know I was constantly super fucking thirsty, yeah. and it was kind of distracting, and we all had, like, dehydration headaches going on, but, um... I think the Mexicans fared a little bit better because they're used to that sort of climate, but when it's that hot, you lose a lot of water and you lose it quickly. Yeah. So I found a big metal pipe that had fallen off the building, and I used it to knock down coconuts. <laughs> and then in the Swiss Army knife that I forgot in my bag, uh, oops. When, when we were crossing the border, I totally went through the scanner with it and everything. Wow. Yeah, and they were like, you have some sort of weird lump in your bag. And I was like, um, no, I don't. And then they checked it, and they couldn't find anything. So I got through border security with, like, three knives in my bag. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, That's so good. good going, TSA. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, it turned out to be a good thing, because when I got down there, like, I... I devised a method to cut holes in the coconut so that you could basically have a little pouring port from them. Yeah. So I drank some coconut milk. I hate coconuts, but you know, <laughs> drink is drink at that point. Yeah. The coconut milk kind of tasted like slightly rotten bananas. Uh, yeah. Like it had a very banana-y, potassium-y taste to it. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm like not a big, big fan of coconuts, but I like coconuts. And, like, Coconut water definitely has a has a peculiar taste. I have a diamond shovel. How do you have a diamond shovel? With efficiency two. Is that yours? What, what diamond shovel? What? I have a diamond shovel just in my inventory. Maybe you got it from a uh, somebody you killed. I must have. It's weird. But uh, yeah, what was I? talking about things. Oh, before um, you continue, we should cut this episode, because it's pushing the 30 minute mark again. Oh shit. <laughs> um, okay, next time on Tea Stains. More exciting stuck in Mexico stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one story I have to my name. Okay. Okay, bye.